does have confidence in Theresa May <laughs> as leader of the Conservative Party. Uh, the number of votes cast uh, in favour of uh, having confidence in Theresa May was 200 yeah. and against yeah. was 117. Yeah. Under the rules set out in the constitution of the Conservative Party, no further confidence vote can take place for at least yeah. two years. You've been listening in there to our partners at the BBC. British Prime Minister Theresa May has survived a vote of no confidence. This comes after her members of her own party attempted to oust her. A faction of about 48 members of the Conservative Party called for the vote of no confidence. This was over their unhappiness over Theresa May's Brexit negotiations with the European Union. And earlier this week, May canceled a vote on her Brexit deal, largely out of concerns that it just wouldn't pass. And because Prime Minister May won just a simple majority of votes, she actually can't be challenged as leader of the Conservative Party for at least another year. The deadline for Brexit currently, that deal to be struck is currently March 29th, 2019. We're going to take a quick break. We'll have much more on this news as well as the other developments in the world. Stick with us. You're streaming CBSN.
Hello, everyone. I'm Tanya Rivero. British Prime Minister Theresa May has survived a vote of no confidence after members of her own party attempted to oust her. A faction of the 48 members of the Conservative Party called for the vote of no confidence over dissatisfaction with May's Brexit negotiations with the European Union. Earlier this week, May canceled a vote on her Brexit deal out of concerns that it would not pass. Because Prime Minister May won a simple majority of votes, she cannot be challenged as leader of the Conservative Party for at least a year. The deadline for a Brexit deal is currently March 29, 2019. For the very latest on this, let's turn to our partners at the BBC. does have confidence in Theresa May <laughs> as leader of the Conservative Party. Uh, the number of votes cast uh, in favour of uh, having confidence in Theresa May was 200 yeah. and against yeah. was 117. Yeah. Under the rules set out in the constitution of the Conservative Party, no further confidence vote can take place Fine, for at least yeah. two. Mr Graham Brady addressing Conservative members just a short time ago. Well, let's cross to the lobby and speak to our chief political correspondent, Vicky Young. Vicky. Yeah, and let's get some immediate reaction. As you could hear there, a raucous cheering in the room there. But I think when the result came out, 117 voting against the Prime Minister, maybe a surprise there that that was so high. Let's get some reaction from uh, Cabinet Minister, Transport Secretary Chris Grayling and Conservative backbencher uh, Vicky Ford. Uh, what's your reaction to that? I think some will be surprised. 117 do not have confidence in Theresa May's leadership. Well, I think the way you have to look at this, she had more support tonight than she did in the last MP's vote in the leadership contest in 2016. And of course, this has been a difficult day for the Conservative Party. Of course, I would rather this hadn't happened. But the reality is the party, by a substantial margin tonight, has said we want you to carry on and do the job. But the problem is, with 117 who don't have confidence in her leadership, how is she going to get her Brexit deal through? How are you going to get all that legislation through if it comes to it? Well, she was very clear on Monday. She's got to deliver a package that will get through the House of Commons. That's self-evident. Uh, and it was very clear on Monday that that wasn't going to happen. And she needs to go back and work on this again. That has to happen. I hope that reassures those colleagues who voted against her this evening. But the reality was, this is a strong vote of support for the Prime Minister. More MPs supported her tonight than did in the leadership contest in 2016. Jacob Rees-Mogg has said it's a terrible result for the Prime Minister. More than a third of her MPs voting against her. She should go straight to the Queen and resign. Well, look, uh, I think the party has said we want you to take us through Brexit. Of course, there are lessons for her, lessons for the party. This has hardly been an ideal day for the Conservative Party. But the party has voted very comfortably that it wants her to stay, wants her to take us through Brexit. And, and really now, that is the most important thing for this country. We've got to get through Brexit, we've got to take Britain out of the European Union on the 29th of March. We've got to fulfil the results of the referendum, and that's the priority now. Just finally, what would you say to your colleagues, those Brexiteer colleagues who brought this in the first place, trying to oust her? But what I would be saying to my Brexiteer colleagues is that right now we've got to unify and make sure we deliver Brexit in March. Vicky Ford, your reaction to that, were you expecting it to be that high a number against the Prime so, Minister? First of all, can I say, actually it's a huge sense of relief that this vote has now happened. It had been hanging over the Prime Minister, that uncertainty, for many weeks. But now the vote has happened, there cannot be another no-confidence motion in her for another 12 months. And a win is a win. She's won tonight and we need to take that as a mandate to go on and find a way through these incredibly complicated negotiations and discussions. She promised the 1922 committee and the backbenchers today, those who are concerned about this Northern Irish backstop, that she is working to find that solution and that will be key to unlocking the next stage of this deal. Um, Jeremy Corbyn's lost votes of no confidence, I think twice from his parliamentary party and he's still sitting there in the front bench. The Prime Minister has won the vote tonight and that puts that uncertainty to one side for at least a year. Um, and we need to actually focus now on helping her 
all of her all of her team find a deal that we can support because actually we need to move past these discussions and be focused on other issues that the country is concerned about. She felt the need tonight uh, in that meeting with Conservative Ben just to say she wouldn't lead you into a general election in 2022. Now that's because she said she acknowledged that there are many colleagues who don't want her to do that. Isn't there a problem? Once you say you're going, any authority you do have starts to ebb away. We saw it with Tony Blair, we saw it with David Cameron. But I think we are in a very different situation now because, of course, we have the fixed-term parliaments, OK? So only she can call a snap election. She made it very clear that she's not going to do that. We've no intention of allowing the government to fall. Uh, and so the, the election doesn't happen till 2022. And that actually, I think, gives some very sensible breathing space for us to look at the talent that is actually coming through in new generations in the Conservative Party as well. And to get on not just through this difficult next few months into the finalising the Brexit uh, negotiations, finalising that, but also uh, looking at the future and looking at the other issues the country is concerned about, because she also raised those issues. You know, reminding us that our constituents, you know, actually they want to look at things like transport and roads and hospitals and schools and the other things that the government needs to be working on and, and, and is working on, but all the uh, media focus gets sucked into this discussion about Brexit. And when it comes to the DUP, there are many saying that the DUP have effectively withdrawn their support. They've made it clear they do not trust Theresa May any longer. Isn't that a massive problem? Because they are giving her her mandate to govern. So she made it very clear tonight that the issue that they have addressed around the backstop, that she wants to find a way to resolve that, that she's speaking to the European leaders, and that what we need to have before that vote comes back is not just quote, warm words from Europe about not wanting to use it, but actually legal certainty. And she's made that very clear in the discussions in the 1922 tonight. Vicky Ford, thank you very much indeed. And there were really uh, mixed feelings about what Theresa May said about that uh, election announcement that she wouldn't lead them into 2022. There are some who don't think she should be the person who directs and leads all those negotiations that may be still to come about Britain's future relationship with the EU. We'll have to see how much pressure she comes under, especially with 117 of her own MPs not having confidence in her leadership. Yes, interesting, but she remains the Prime Minister, Vicky, and she will go to Brussels, of course, tomorrow to that European summit to try and get something on the deal that she wants to put to the House of Commons. Let's get some reaction from over here on the Green. With me is the Shadow Business Secretary, Rebecca Long-Bailey, and also the Conservative MP and loyalist, uh, George Freeman, is also with us. Nice to see you both. Uh, Rebecca, is that the end of the confidence motions, or is the Labour Party about to bring one against the government? I don't think it changes anything in terms of the Prime Minister's position within Parliament. She'd already lost confidence across the floor of the House. She pulled her Brexit vote this week because she knew she didn't have the full support of her own MPs, never mind the rest of the House of Commons. So I find it very difficult to see how, unless she manages to get dramatic changes made to the withdrawal agreement, which doesn't seem to be the case because she's not changing any of her red lines this deal that she has on the table will not go through parliament we heard from the SNP earlier who said they've been urging jeremy corbyn to push a confidence motion against the government and he's sitting there with his fingers in his ears in a bunker well, no, mentality no that's not true at all and we've been working very closely with members across the house from all political parties to assess the best time to, to put forward a motion of no confidence. Because, so when is the best because, time? Because, well, ultimately, we want a successful outcome. I think lodging a, a motion of no confidence and not winning it might provide a little bit of parliamentary drama, theatrics, if you like, that might make a few people feel better. But that won't secure the outcome that we want to see, which is a change in government so that we can secure a deal that puts our economy first. We don't have that at the moment, and it does not have parliamentary consensus, unfortunately. George, to get some people to vote for her this evening, she's had to accept that she can't lead the Conservative Party into the next general election, there will be a lot of people say, well, does that mean that she goes in April or May when she's taken the UK out of the European Union? Because surely a successor has to come and then start leading the next bit of the process. Well, I welcome her commitment. I call for it. And it was very moving to hear her say that she accepts that when she's got through uh, delivering a Brexit withdrawal agreement, uh, she's out of runway and somebody else should lead the party on. Look, I'm delighted tonight we're getting back to business. This was a potential distraction from the real challenge, which is what the British people want us to do, which is to get on 
and deliver a Brexit withdrawal agreement mm. yeah, in accordance with the referendum result. And, uh, you know, it's difficult. Uh, there is no easy solution. And it's, uh, Rebecca is a very good front bench politician on the Labour side. I suggest to her, her and my constituencies both, both voted Leave. This isn't a party issue. There isn't a Conservative Brexit or a Labour Brexit. There is a national Brexit and we need to get on and deliver it. We have our differences, mm. but let's deliver what the people wanted, which is a sensible and orderly Brexit transition and then have the debate about what we do to put this country back on its feet and to reunite this country. I want us to work together on this and I think Jeremy Corbyn is playing a Brexiteer up north and a lever down south and if he was Prime Minister tomorrow he would face exactly the same challenges as the Prime Minister. I'm sure Rebe Rebecca would tell you that that deal doesn't meet Labour's six tests. When you look at that figure, 117 that voted against the Prime Minister, that is broadly the number that were against the deal. I think we were at 109 on Monday when she pulled the vote. How? on earth is she going to get this deal through the House of Commons when that number of people have no confidence both in her and the deal she's trying to get through? Well, we all know the six tests are an excuse for Jamie Corbyn to be able to say always, well, I can't agree with this. Look, he's oh, waiting for this to fall into his lap. The bigger responsibility of a proper opposition, and I accept a government, I've been calling for us to pursue this in a cross-party way, is for us to find a Brexit that delivers for the majority of the British people. It won't satisfy everybody. I think there's a Brexit deal to be negotiated here in the next two months, and I'm delighted that we're now going to get back to work. Uh, a leadership election would have been a huge distraction, and whoever won it would have started where Theresa May starts tomorrow morning. OK, we are out of time. Sorry. I uh, would love to speak to you more, but we must cross back to the lobby. Vicky Young has some guests with her there. Vicky. Yeah, well, let's get immediate reaction from Marc Francois. He is uh, part of the European research group, the Brexiteer wing of the party, I think it's fair to say. What do you make of that result? The Prime Minister has won and won quite easily. Well, I wouldn't say that easily because 117 of her colleagues have voted against her. That is over a third of the Conservative parliamentary party. That in itself is a pretty devastating verdict. And remember the government payroll ministers and aides and such like is 140. So actually she lost well over half of the backbenchers. And, you know, that's an extremely difficult position for any prime minister to find themselves in. But because of the rules, she is now safe for a year. She cannot be challenged in this way for a year. So haven't you mistimed this challenge to her leadership? No, because most of the pundits uh, were saying we get about somewhere between about 60 and 80. And we've, we've blown that clear out of the water. You know, over a third of her MPs have said they don't have confidence in her. That is a devastating verdict. But if she carries on, which she is perfectly entitled to do, she'll say she's won, and I'm sure she's about to tell us that now, what, what can you do? Well, let us see what happens in the cold light of morning. You know, everybody's very excited. It's been a long day. It's a frenetic atmosphere. I think, you know, in the cold light of day, when people reflect on that number, 117, it's a massive number, far bigger than almost anybody was predicting. I actually, I think that will be, you know, that will be very sobering for the Prime Minister and the Cabinet. And then we'll have to take it from there. But, you know, if I were her, I wouldn't be pleased with this at all. Quite the opposite. You think she should resign? I think she needs to think very carefully about what to do now for any Prime Minister to have a third of their MPs vote against them is pretty devastating. So I think everybody needs to sleep on it and think calmly, but she's clearly lost the support of the DUP, she's lost the support of a third of her colleagues over half her backbenchers. It's an extremely difficult position for her from now on. Okay, we'll be hearing from the Prime Minister very shortly. Mark Francois, thank you very much indeed. And I think that's what you're going to hear from a lot of Conservative MPs, that it was a victory, but one that leaves her weakened. Vicky, thank you very much indeed. I've got Stephen Gethins from the Scottish National Party with me. He's their Europe spokesman. Um, we just heard from Rebecca Long-Bailey. Um, no clarity yet on whether they're going to call a vote of no confidence in this government, but of course you are urging them to do so. Of course we are. Look, the Tories are utterly divided. That's pretty clear tonight when Theresa May has got almost 40% of her colleagues don't think she's fit to be Prime Minister. The Tories aren't fit to govern and we're at a critical juncture for the whole country with decisions that will impact on people the length and breadth of the United Kingdom. The Tories are not fit to govern. It's a luxury, frankly, we can no longer afford and it's time for them to step to one side. This is too important and impacts the lives of too many people for the Tories to be playing games with people's lives.
But perhaps he's not called it because we know, or we, it's been intimated by the DUP, that they would fall in behind the Conservative government. They would vote against the deal, but they would vote for them in a, in a motion of no confidence. Perhaps he just sees the writing on the wall that there just isn't the numbers there for him. Or, or maybe the only thing that the Tory government have got going for them is the most ineffective official opposition that we've seen for decades. We need Labour to step up to the plate. Come and join us. Come and join the SNP, the Liberal Democrats, the Green Party on taking on this government who are no longer fit to govern and need to step to one side. So what happens when you approach the Labour leader's office, which I know you've been doing over the last yeah. few days, what sort of reaction do you get? Well, look, we will we will engage with our colleagues in the Labour Party in a respectful way, and it is, you know, it is their decision to make. But we are at a critical time. This is an impact on people's lives, the length and breadth of the country. The UK is in crisis at the moment, and we're asking Labour to step up to the plate and join us. Mm. But we come back to the point, as yeah. I say, there just aren't the numbers there, and I'm not well, sure what I'm the not... purpose of it is. Sure. People out there in the country say we've had parlour games today, uh, we need to get on, we've 100, what, 107 days left, and here's the SNP calling for another vote of confidence, yeah. which, which well, they can't possibly Christian, win. Christian, you're talking about games being played. The Tories are playing games. You know, this is all about an internal Tory election that's going on. This is not just about the Conservative Party. You know, David Cameron might have thought that when he called the referendum. Theresa May might think that at the moment. This impacts us all it's a parliament of minorities, that means each and every party has a role to play. And you see an effective government in Scotland, which is minority and delivering today with the Scottish budget. And you're seeing an ineffective government down in Westminster that's dragging us all over the cliff edge. OK, Stephen Gethins, thank, thank you, you very much indeed. We're much. bouncing back and forth. Let's go back to the lobby. Vicky Young's got some more reaction. Well, Stephen Gethins there saying every party has a role to play, probably none more so than the Democratic Unionist Party, of course, in agreement with the Conservatives and giving them their majority. Let's speak to Nigel Dodds now. Uh, what do you make of this? Theresa May has won this uh, leadership challenge to her. Does this mean she is now secure? Well, it's a matter for the Conservative Party and, you know, in terms of who should lead them, um, our focus has been on the withdrawal agreement and the changes that need to be made to it to get our support and the support of many other colleagues across the House of Commons. I don't think this vote really changes very much in terms of the arithmetic on that, uh, and that's our concern. Now, Arling Foster had a long meeting today with the Prime Minister. Are you hearing anything about what the Prime Minister might be able to get from uh, Europe about uh, that backstop, that issue that you are so concerned about? I'm hearing that there are suggestions of some kind of legally enforceable reassurance. Well, we had a, a good meeting with the Prime Minister today, about 45 minutes going over the various issues. She understands what I think our concerns are about the legally binding nature of the indefinite arrangements that we would be tied into and the difficulties that would pose for Northern Ireland. So whether or not she delivers anything that changes that remains to be seen. Um, we will wait and see. The noise is coming out of Europe. Uh, some of the member state governments don't sound too promising, but on the other hand, she has made commitments tonight to the 22 committee and to us. So we will wait and see. Um, but it, she knows what has to be done, and, and that's hopefully what has now got through. And, and do you and your party trust the Prime Minister? There are many going around, many Conservative people say that you have lost trust in her, and actually as long as she stays as leader of the Conservative Party, actually you can't really support the Conservative Party. Well, what we would say is that uh, in terms of trust, it is a question of trust. It's a question of what do we get into legally binding statute and legally binding treaties. So, you know, the word of any Prime Minister or any politician of any side is not what's significant here. It's what's in legally binding agreements and treaties. And therefore, you know, we have in the past heard commitments and pledges from the Prime Minister that haven't been lived up to in terms of the actions. So that's why, you know, whatever she says, it's what's delivered in terms of the text that we'll be examining very closely. And if the Labour Party were to hold a no confidence motion in the Conservative government tomorrow, how would your party, how would your MPs vote? Well, we wouldn't be supporting a no confidence motion. Uh, I think it would be illogical to do this while we still have to wait and see what the outcome of the uh, work that the Prime Minister is now engaged in and whilst we're still engaged in trying to get this withdrawal agreement uh, changed. Now, obviously, if the deal as currently proposed were to pass with the support of Parliament, then that would be a different situation, but we're not at that stage. So if the Prime Minister were to change tack, if you like, and maybe try and get Labour votes behind a so-called softer Brexit, clearly that wouldn't be something you would go along with. 
No, well, I mean, I don't think that that's likely or, or indeed possible. I think that the scale of the vote against her tonight illustrates the problems that she would have with her own, own, within her own party if she were to do that. And remember, there were people who voted for her tonight on the basis of her pledge that she would actually stand down at some point. And I think people would move very quickly if that were to happen. Thank you very much indeed. So the view there from the DUP, crucial, of course, uh, because they have joined with the Conservatives in that agreement uh, to make sure that they are able to govern. Thank you very much indeed. The Prime Minister did return to Downing Street to wait that result from Sir Graham Brady, which has announced uh, in the last uh, 15 minutes or so. And we are expecting some reaction uh, from Number 10. Uh, we are expecting a statement from the Prime Minister. And of course, we will take you to that uh, immediately as it happens. But let's for the moment go to her constituency in Maidenhead in Berkshire, because Sarah Campbell is therefore is getting some reaction from the grassroots, Sarah. Yes, indeed, Christian. I can tell you there was a huge cheer when that result came through around about nine o'clock. Most of the people here, huge supporters of Theresa May. Of course, she's been MP here for 20 years or so. Many people have got to know her. They've worked with her. And uh, you can say, has there been some anger, Richard Kellaway, chairman of the Maidenhead Conservative Association, at what she's had to go through this evening? Uh, yes, I think there has. I mean, in our office, most of the messages coming in are highly supportive of Theresa and a feeling that it's pretty unnecessary to go through this just at this point in time of the Brexit negotiations. Uh, you know her well. Um, how do you think she'll take this result? So 200 in favour, 117, no confidence in her. Yeah, but uh, I think she'll be fairly happy with that. And bear in mind, most of the European leaders have far less, less of a mandate than she's had. And the last uh, vote of no confidence in the House of Commons was against Mr Corbyn, who had 80% against him. So in terms of Westminster, it's not bad. OK, Nahid Majid, um, Conservative supporter, supporter of Theresa May. What do you make to tonight's events? I think it's a good result. It's unfortunate that we ever had to be in a situation to have a vote of no confidence. And you've been listening to our partners at the BBC. We're going to take you now to London, where Theresa May is speaking after surviving a vote of no confidence after members of her own party attempted to oust her. Let's listen. A number of colleagues did cast a vote against me, and I've listened to what they said. Following this ba ballot, we now need to get on with the job of delivering Brexit for the British people and building a better future for this country. A Brexit that delivers on the vote that people gave, that brings back control of our money, our borders and our laws, that protects jobs, security and the union, that brings the country back together rather than entrenching division. That must start here in Westminster, with politicians on all sides coming together and acting in the national interest. For my part, I've heard what the House of Commons said about the Northern Ireland backstop. And when I go to the European Council tomorrow, I will be seeking legal and political assurances that will assuage the concerns that members of Parliament have on that issue. But while delivering Brexit is important, we also need to focus on the other issues that people feel are vital to them that matter to them today, today, the issues that we came into politics to deal with. Building a stronger economy, delivering first-class public services, building the homes that families need. We owe it to the people who put us here to put their priorities first. So here is our renewed mission, delivering the Brexit that people voted for, bringing the country back together and building a country that truly works for everyone. But can you get your Brexit deal through? And that was British Prime Minister Theresa May after surviving a vote of no confidence. 117 members of her own party voted to oust her, but 200 members voted to leave her in. She just spoke, said, spoke saying that now she will concentrate on the efforts of bringing about Brexit. All right, we're going to take a quick break right now. We'll be right back with much more CBSN. Stay with us.